How do you see the second half shaping up, Harold? Well, it's very much uh, Shrewsbury trying to come back into the game, but Middlesbrough's defence is playing exceptionally well. And this is probably the best I've seen Tony McAndrew play for a very, very long time. He's, he's a tower of strength there, back in the defence. But as I write, there's a, an attack on the Middlesbrough goal for Hannover. Thanks very much, Harold. There was an attack there on the Middlesbrough goal. There was a little bit of a crackle developed between the Shrewsbury Town number 11, Paul Tester, and Middlesbrough's centre forward this afternoon, Heine Otto. The referee's going to have to do a job of work to try and calm down the two players. And he also, of course, the Dutchman, the likeable Dutchman, not noticed for a show of temperament or anything like that, which just really goes to show the way in which Willie Madger has worked his team up the fever pitch this afternoon. Sandy Otto is contesting every single ball. That time, though, it was a foul. The referee has given a free kick for Shrewsbury, just about on level with the Middlesbrough area, to be taken by their left-back, Paul Petz. Paul Petz flipped that ball in towards the far post, and Kellen Hanlon, who's handling this season, well, there's not exactly been a mackling on many occasions, but that time it was. He grabbed that ball at the far post and held hold of it. Thankful, so everybody in Cleveland now can breathe a sigh of relief. Kelma Hallen has the ball in his hands. Now hoist the ball towards the forwards. Who's going to get on this particular one? Is Archie Stevens? No, it's going to be the head of the Shrewsbury centre half, Colin Griffin. Griffin trying to get Shrewsbury moving, and indeed they do move forward there. The number seven, Bernard McNally, tries to move forward, tries to get the ball past Tony McAndrew. And McAndrew, well, the referee seems to be reaching for his notebook. Let's hope he's not going to pull Tony McAndrew over towards him. No, indeed he's not. He's going to pull over Bernard McNally, the number seven, whose right foot certainly seemed extended. Manager has been echoing in their ears and they've tried to come out and disrupt Middlesbrough to knock them out of their stride. But thankfully, at the present time, they've not succeeded. The scoreline remains after 11 minutes in the second half. Shrewsbury nil, Middlesbrough two. The Borough goal scorer is Brian Laws. Remember, on four minutes, that crisp drive from 25 yards. Peter Beagle getting the second on 36 minutes. As it is, it's going to be a free kick taken by Tony Mowbray just inside his own half. He tries to get the ball down the left hand side towards Archie Stevens. But at the end, the ball goes out, drifts out for a throw into Shrewsbury, taken quickly in towards Ross McLaren. McLaren into the centre circle. But there is Tony Mowbray, his brave head there yet again. Can he give an opportunity for Bird to move forward? Stevens onto Peter Beagley. Beagley inside to Gary Hamilton. He's 25 yards out, just on the edge. Tried to move forward on the edge of the area. He certainly appears to be tackled from behind there. The uh, Shrewsbury spectators in front of us, well, they don't seem too much of the referee's decision to John Ball, but it is going to be a free kick. The Borough fans were to our right hand side at the station. They're delighted, of course. It's going to be a free kick for Middlesbrough. And Hamilton's feet is taken from under there, just about to be prepared for a shot. It's a good opportunity, if Middlesbrough can get something from this, to put in their third goal of the afternoon. Let's hope there's a number of Middlesbrough players congregating around the ball. Paul Ward is there, Tim McAndrews there, Brian Laws is around the ball. And Hamilton's just walking away, thankfully not too hurt from that particular challenge. And now it's the referee's task to try and push the wall back 10 yards. He's pushed them back now, they're right on the edge of their area. The free kick is going to be taken. Tony McAndrew taps it, it's left there by Paul Ward. But in the end, I think it was confusion totally by the middle of the players. They all left it for one another. And Shrewsbury wants to get the ball clear, and the was desperation to get the ball back. They give away a free kick to Shrewsbury. To be taken by the centre half, Colin Griffin. Griffin there kicked the ball in anger towards Peter Beagle because Peter Beagle certainly hadn't retreated 10 yards. And there's a bit of confusion going on at the referee has lost control of this particular game. They give a free kick to Shrewsbury. Their centre half then in his anger kicked the ball against Peter Beagle. The ball rounds into the centre circle. Ross McLaren tried to take a free kick from there. And again, the referee's calmed things down, taking the ball back. And Colin Griffith can yet again get on with it. He hoists that ball high. But Tony Mowbray, just on the edge of the area, manages to get the ball clear in the shape of Gary Hamilton. Hamilton then tries to switch the ball towards Dave Curry, but Curry was a bit too slow on that occasion. Not too much damage done because Gary Hamilton's got the ball back. He's inside the centre circle. He knocks that ball long out. Stevens races into the clear. The offside flag is raised. The referee with a red flag over on the far side, Mr. Joyce, raises that high into the air to indicate offside against Archie Stevens. Shrewsbury can yet again breathe again. A free kick for them, taken by Ross McLaren. Ross McLaren, that high ball goes forward. They're throwing players forward. Steve Cross, the number six, has gone in. He can't get on the end of it. It's on the right-hand side of the minute. Shrewsbury attacking the form of Bernard McNally. An opportunity to try and get round Paul Ward. He does. His centre comes in, but there is uh, Callum O'Hanlon. O'Hanlon, who manages to get hold of it. Um, but I'm afraid to say, Callum O'Hanlon dragged that ball out, so it's going to be a corner. Shrewsbury's second corner of the afternoon when O'Hanlon pulled that ball around. The cross came in from Gary Hackett. It seemed for all the world as if it was drifting out. O'Hanlon got hold of it. it seemed to drag it over the line. The line's been indicated a corner to Shrewsbury's second corner of the afternoon. In it comes towards the near post. A flick on there. Oh, a fine shot indeed. A really tremendous shot by Gary Stevens that rattled against the Middlesbrough bar and rebounded out to safety. So Middlesbrough's goal breathes again. The corner came in, there was a bit of a jostling going on in that area. Gary Stevens, the number nine, seized the opportunity to grab hold of the loose ball and rattle a right foot shot against Kelmo Hanlon's left hand post. Certainly if it had gone an inch or two towards Kelmo Hanlon, it would have been buried in the far corner of the net because the goalkeeper would have had no earthly chance. The must be defending now inside their six yard box, not just managed to get the ball back to Kelmo Hanlon. So we can all breathe a sigh of relief. Harold Shepperton, a sigh from you, certainly. Well, yes, because Shrewsbury are coming more and more into the game and the pinning middles are back in their own half. And that really was a, a, an escape for the borough. It was a good shot which hit the bar and Callum Hanlon would not have seen it as it gone in. 
But uh, having said that, Shrewsbury pushing forward and Middlesbrough have got to just contain them for this period and absorb their pressure and start getting the ball forward again. They're not in any immediate danger, but uh, Shrewsbury, for, uh, you know, unfortunately, are coming more into the game. Yes, Shrewsbury are, as we mentioned at half-time. Certainly the stern words must have been given. But at the present time, Shrewsbury are going to make a substitution. Bernard McNally is being taken from the field. Paul Johnson is going to take his place. We have 15 minutes gone of the second half. 30 minutes, as I keep on mentioning, those minutes ticking away towards Middlesbrough survival. If the scoreline remains, it is. Shrewsbury nil, Middlesbrough 2. So Shrewsbury now playing their last card, as it were, putting on their substitute, Paul Johnson, in place of Bernard McNally. As Harold Shepperton rightly mentioned in the second half, Shrewsbury a different proposition, putting on the pressure. Gary Stevens has rattled against the bar, and now they have a free kick right on the edge of Middlesbrough's penalty area. It's going to be an indirect free kick. Looks as if it's going to be taken by their substitute, Paul Johnson. The referee waiting, pushing the Middlesbrough wall back, making sure that they go back the full 10 yards distance. And now in comes Paul Johnson to take this free kick. He taps it alongside him towards Ross McLaren. McLaren goes inside one man, inside two. His first time shot goes wide. Well, that ball took a swerve at the last minute. He went inside one Middlesbrough player, inside the second, created an opportunity all of his own. And from the edge of the area, he put in a first-time shot that took a bend just the wrong way of the post as far as he was concerned, the right way of the post as far as the travelling Middlesbrough support is concerned, as that ball went wide. And that really sums up Shrewsbury's pressure. They've hit the post, they're now moving forward dangerously. Thankfully, Middlesbrough hanging on to that two-goal lead. Archie Stevens is now challenging in the centre circle for a high ball taken there by Callum O'Hannon and winning a free kick. Stevens wins that free kick inside the centre circle. Gary Hamilton grabs the ball, looks as if he's going to be taking it. He's trying to wait until Archie Stevens gets forward. Peter Beagre is alongside Archie Stevens right on that edge of the area. Now Gary Hamilton moves forward to try and join them himself, leaving this kick to be taken by the defenders. Tony Mowbray is now moving backwards. He is the one who is going to be taking it, seems. Stepping now forward, taking his time, dwelling on those few seconds that he can manage to waste before he hoists this ball into the area towards the head of Archie Stevens. Stevens wins it first time, but Paul Johnson manages to clear it just before Dave Curry get in there. In the end, it wouldn't have mattered anyway because the lines went over there with the red flag and it raised for offside against Dave Curry just inside that Shrewsbury penalty area. Middlesbrough then no doubt relieved to get out of their own area, out of their own area from defending, and last move forward yet again towards that Shrewsbury goal, because the Middlesbrough fans at the station end of the ground away to the right-hand side of the common tradition, they've been a wee bit subdued in the second half, no doubt reflecting the team's mood, hoping that they can hang on. It's Ross McLaren who hoists a high ball in towards the area, in towards number six, Steve Cross who's been pushed further and further forward in the second half, but thankfully Kelmo Hanlon was there to grab hold of the ball first time, and his handling this afternoon, well, as we mentioned a little bit earlier this season, there's been a lot of criticism raised against Callum. But his handling this afternoon has been absolutely spot on and perfect. And it's needed to be too. His kick goes forward towards Dave Curry. Curry, though, comes out second best with a substitute, Paul Johnson. And in between them, the ball lands in towards the centre circle. Gary Hamilton gets it. Hamilton is then trying to forge an opening down the right-hand side towards Peter Beagery. But Beagery had strayed offside. Certainly Shrewsbury's offside trap is working much better in the second period than it did in the first because it was sprung on more than one occasion as Archie Stevens will may well rue on the way back to Teesside because he beat that trap twice got himself clear in good positions but his final shot wasn't really good enough went wide well Shrewsbury's free kick for that offside goes forward towards the head of the forwards there for Shrewsbury but uh, Tony Mowbray the player of the season for Middlesbrough his head meets that first and gets away the danger for the minute anyway because Shrewsbury have picked up the ball away on the right hand side it's in the form of uh, Gary Hackett the number 8 he tries to get the ball forward in turn and a high ball there, Tony Mowbray's head is yet again there. Tony Mowbray's head at the end of this game must really ache the number of times he's been heading that ball out in good defensive situations, calming everybody down with this good resolute approach. And he wins for his pens there, a free kick for Middlesbrough as the challenge was a bit too robust on him on the edge of the area. So a free kick's going to be taken by the borough when Kilmo Hanlon manages to retrieve the ball from the spectators way to our left in the tech end. It's been retrieved now, free kick going to be taken by Irving Natras. And finally things are restored to order, Natras is going to take it. Looking forward, Mills were still pursuing their attacking policy. I noticed Dave Curry's there, Archie Stevens, Peter Beagery were on the left hand side. There's certainly enough packing or defending in numbers at the present time. And up goes Natchez's free kick towards Archie Stevens. Hasn't had too much success in the air really this afternoon, but he is battling with the picked up the ball in the form of Steve Cross, tripped up from behind. And Archie Stevens has said one or two words because the referee decided there to give a free kick for Shrewsbury to Steve Cross. Archie Stevens, he went by him, said a word, said something to the referee. And the referee said, Well, I've heard enough from you, Archie, I'm going to put your name in the notebook. That's the second middle for player to go along with Tony McAndrew has been booked this afternoon. Stevens there booked for descent. 20 minutes of the second half have gone. That's 65 minutes in all of the game in progress. The shoes which free kick taken by Ross McLaren.